Welcome back, folks. It's your boy, um, Bobbledink. <laughs> it's not. No, no, it's not Bobbledink. It's Hello, Robert YouTube David. watchers. Get it right, Game Sunday. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We are in slime time. I'm joined here by Rodri, Bobbledink, and Lucas Bolton. Level six. Oh, the yo. second boss of the game. How are you doing today, guys? I love slime time. Uh, very well. Well, I, I was okay until you got my catchphrase wrong. I'm pretty upset, as you know. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I... and. Muscular. Hey, and he throws back insults, by the way, first thing I want to point out here. Uh, good strat here is to spin, so you uh, ignore... Basically, you go get hit, basically. Yeah, where did you learn that from? Because I only learned that a few years ago, actually. Um, Who did I learn it off? I can't remember how I learned it again. Um, Muddy Maestro. Prop, maybe. <laughs> it probably could have been him, or someone, or maybe I just did it myself. Will we just say me? Will we just say me, sure? Uh, for context, guys, Muddy Maestro, the reason why I mention him is because he actually used to speedrun this game a he very long time he ago. Did he? he literally got the world record this for this, news, like, um, in 2010 did, or something like that. 2012. Yeah. We did the grand final for this in August 2012. He got the world record December of that year. You this know, I am game. I am surprised, like, the Disney speedrunning community doesn't exist in the same way the Spyro one does. Because you'd think, too. like, there'd be a bigger fandom for games like this. I don't easier. know. Disney's more widely they, they spoken easier, about. Like. And they are easier to speedrun these games, too, actually. I will say that. If I say yeah. I don't say if no. Well, I don't know so much about this game, because I've never played this it one. It has been done um, a fair bit, this one. Um, same with Bugs Life, too. Bugs Life's the one I have played. Never completed, but played. Oh, well, Bugs Life is uh, actually the shortest one as well. Um, you can actually go for the whole game and not need to collect anything, but whereas Toy Story 2, you absolutely need to collect yeah, almost everything. like Eyes and Gullies. In the PS1 like, version, exactly. anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's PC, actually. No, uh, there's one Chris Fisher. PC is like 30 PC. tokens, and PS1 is 40, which I'm really not sure what that, what that was all about. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, this is... One of the best levels of the game, I was Toy Bomb. Yeah, exactly. Great music. Actually, the Slime Time had great music yeah. too, actually. That's one of the main strengths, I feel, of this of this game, the soundtrack. Did they have, like, um, involvement from Randy Newman or any of the Pixar gang uh, when uh, making this game? As far as I'm aware, no. Okay. No, probably not. Well, it's, um, just, it it's amazing how accurate that this... made it. Who made it, sorry? Uh, a company called Swall Studios made the soundtrack. And oh, wow. uh, they also did Wrath of Cortex as well. Oh yeah, uh, they, they're saying the composer and actually Life. is the same for this and game. And Bugs Life, yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, I know I know the ones. They also did Finding Nemo, which legitimately has my favourite piece oh, what of the music of all time. Yeah, showing off we strat here <laughs> in the video. Before. <laughs> How do I get over here again? Connor, are you cheating? Do I yeah. need to report you to the speedrun police? Like, <laughs> There we go, see that? I've never done that before. AKA so, so, Maestro. Yeah, fine. <laughs> yeah, Money, I'm Nemo, sorry. It was, it was the only... It was sort of the purposes of content. Know, sorry, Muddy. The only thing I know about um, Finding Nemo is the fact that the loading screens are ridiculously long. Oh, yeah, I played them. Um, uh, you need to listen Harry to Potter's Field Tables. Trip. Field Trip Field is, Trip. like, legitimately the best piece of music I've ever heard. Our friend uh, Emily Dixon actually played uh, that game as well, Finding Nemo. Yeah. Uh, but refuses to play good travel steals games like this. Yeah, like this one, <laughs> Rock <Rattle> Cortex. <laughs> All right, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying the game was good, but that, that Twin music. Sanity. Twin Sanity. There's was, a wee uh, strat, by the way. You can, okay, there's game. a wee strat you can do up here, but I don't know how to do it, sadly. It's a wee speedrun skip. I have not learned yeah. it yet. Oh, so you, can, so you can skip, <laughs> so you can skip the, the hover boots. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, on. basically, because um, you need the hover boots to get what, the last collectible, you see. It's the uh, chicken, yeah. Three, I have to collect five chickens in this level. There's a theme of five in each level, actually. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you almost got Wait, the top what, what on earth is that green substance? Like, goo. Uh, did someone point. just not do their job? Like, yeah, someone, not someone, someone, they left the, they, they, there, was a, there was a leak and, and goo came in. The trouble is, like, this game would be oh. way too easy if it didn't have some. On on uh, inexplicable ooze in the basements. Yeah. Why is there why is there ooze? In I the mean, basement? to be fair, e even Spyro is guilty of this. I know. Like, um, what well, what well, not having some illogical areas where uh, <laughs> there's ooze and stuff. Yeah, I would yeah, agree yeah. With that. 
I mean, Spyro one's probably the worst defender for that. Um, yeah, oh, obviously, it's no offense, Laura. I mean, there wasn't a like um, lofty castle had a particularly weird one. I think I can't remember the one yeah. off the top of my head. Well, there's also oh, um, that no, like bad. here we are talking about Spyro and a Toy Story two album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay, back to the pizza. Uh, let's talk about uh, back, back to the, the pizzas. pizzas. Yeah, yeah, back to yeah. the pizzas. Um, so yeah, uh, love you, Adam. Here. It can be a um, tr- tricky. <laughs> um, oh, look, Rodri. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go. Uh, over here, we should be able to get the we. Yeah, that's the first part of this challenge. Yep, there we go. Um, that's that's um, we're, we're we're only doing this challenge, by the way, to get the Pizza Planet token because you can't get all the bugs. Pizza right Planet. Now. As we back speak, to the Pizza explain. Planet is uh, what I'm hearing. Back to the Pizza. <laughs> I'm I'm, was... I'm surprised I made that joke before Connor <laughs> did. Should, to be honest, you should have said that the first time. I missed the part. That's <laughs> my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. the wire, so just... that is bit, but it is a bit redundant having to get one chicken just to get this one token. All oh, right, um, is it, is it really, you have to ask yourself: Is this really worth it? Yeah. Do I? I always love how they design toy stores in video games. Like you know, you have the checkouts, and then you just have random boxes stacked on top of each other, and just random poles out of nowhere. And you're like, who else but a toy would swing on this? Like. All right. Unless Al secretly knows that the toys are Alive. indeed sentient. Yeah. But I mean, you... if Sid knows. Yeah. I mean, can you believe that he has to drive all the way to work on a Saturday? Yeah. I mean, who would have thought? I mean, what a crime. Well, it's eh? like us having to do this LP on a Saturday. You I know, know. I, I can't believe he's. I, <laughs> I can't believe we do the LP all on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> So up we go here, yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So do I think I mentioned how the composer for this game actually is the same composer from like Wrath of Cortex, Bugs Life, a few other games too. Yeah, the, I was gonna say um, on that point as well. Like, what I love about their work in particular is they have like a real strength of working on games that aren't like the best or most memorable video games, but making music that's. Memorable. Far better than it needed to be. Like... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly, like, you know, this... That's one of the main things, I think, is this game as well, the soundtrack to it. Yeah, exactly. You see, like, hit... Oh, ow, I got hit. I got hit. There we go. We're just going to push this log here, and this... And, yeah. This is my... Log? Uh, box, sorry. I was going to say. Like... <laughs> I is this call... a timber store? Uh, yeah, it's a DIY store. It's actually a secret DIY <laughs> it's, store. It's actually, uh, what is it, B&Q and home base. Yeah. Not home bargain stuff. Wix and Ikea. There we go. Okay. I think Luke... we've lost Lucas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If Lucas drops, he... Luke said if he drops his internet. But, uh, yeah. Um... Oh, I see. There we go. I uh, just need to get, um, hope we go here. So yeah, when did you first play this game, Rodri, actually? Uh, so I've not actually um, played this oh, one yeah, in particular. Oh, yeah, that's right, actually. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I was um, saying that. I remember that now. Sorry, actually. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, I've watched the films, though. Like, in fact, I kid you not, um, when my family first ever got a... Oh, that's such a cool effect. All right. Like seeing his reflection and stuff. Like, yeah, that's so good for PS One era. Right. Um, yeah. When my family first got a DVD player, we had a copy of Toy Story on DVD, and yeah. I used to like go home after school every day and just watch it. Like it was amazing. Um, and then I realized they did a Toy Story two. And for years, I wanted it because I wanted to be able to just watch it whenever I wanted. Um, this was obviously before the days we had things like Disney Plus and, well, we had the internet, but yeah. couldn't really just watch full movies on it. Um, so there's like a website called dvd.co.uk oh, yeah. that I kept trying to log on to every day being like, you know, come on, let's buy the DVD. Yeah, um, my it wasn't around in that. stores or anything. Yeah, fine, right. Oh, no worries. I'm just telling Connor about when I 
you know, first got the DVD of this film. Oh. But yeah, oh, my, yeah. my parents eventually got the DVD or managed to source it, probably from Amazon or somewhere. Wait, you got, and it you got the DVD legitimate. first? I, I, I haven't played the game. I got the VHS team. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, like, this is the thing. I was saying to Connor, um, you've obviously jumped in a little later, but so yeah. like when we first got a DVD player, we had the DVD of Toy Story that I used to watch every day. Oh, but we didn't have God. Toy Story 2. And so for weeks, I was kind of like, you know, begging to have a copy of Toy Story 2. And my parents eventually got it. And it was, yeah, legitimately one of the best days of my life. What, what's your opinion on, on uh, like, the, the shift from Toy Story 1 to 2? For me, I actually think 2 is better. And my reason for that is simply just because it's a bit less depressing at points. Like, there's no... There's, there's more, like, light-hearted moments in it, I think, overall. Like, it, occasionally it will yeah. have drama, dramatic moments like Toy Story 1, but see, Toy Story 1, you can clearly tell it was, like, the start, you know, so they had to establish everything, the relationship and all that. I feel like Toy Story 2 is able to, like, have yeah, more fun with sort of characters. Thing. Yeah, I think. I feel, I feel it was better just for the fact that they gave up the rivalry between Woody mm -hmm. and Buzz. Yeah, made them better. Like, friends. they put them on equal footing. Yeah, I um, agree with that. But obviously, Toy Story One had to go through that, like, I, had to go through that storyline in a way because yeah. I felt I like think it had validity in what it was doing, yeah. and that's what well, makes it good. Buzz still. and yeah. Woody's friendship had to feel learned. Like, yeah, exactly. why on earth would just a uh, like classic cowboy doll and a new state of the art Buzz Lightyear just click yeah. straight away? You know, it wouldn't have made it would have made less sense. So you kind of had to have that there. Yeah, exactly. And they yeah. did have some really good moments, like like I did like Sid as a villain and all that. It was an yeah. interesting twist on villainy, I will say. <laughs> I think what's interesting as well is watching how, like, over the past, I guess, 27 years now, like, how the animation at Pixar's really evolved to the point that, like, when I watched it as a kid, Toy Story 1 looked absolutely amazing. And yeah. I feel like the animation's aged somewhat. Yeah. You know, like, you can definitely tell it's a 90s CGI film. Um, but at the same time, like, I look at it now and I'm still able to enjoy it because, you know, it wasn't good because it was a CGI film, but it was, it was good it was because story, it was a good film. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. Um, and it did have good animation and it did, it has kind of held up, yeah. I think. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think, like, the only... The only thing I would really say about the, the character designs on it is like obviously the humans aren't gonna look as great as what yeah. Pixar films look now. Exactly. Yeah. Other than that, yeah, it's high high well, bomb time. I sort of look at it a bit like you know how you have sky boxes in video games, then you have like yeah. the main area with collision. That's pretty much I mean that's still basically what it is in CGI films. And I guess in traditional cell animation. Um but especially in Toy Story, you could definitely tell, like, the trees and the skies in the background were, like, flat paintings. And then they modelled the houses and streets in front of that. Um, yeah. Well, of course, most of it took place in the bedroom, so they didn't have to worry so much about that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, no, I think what's more interesting to me is the jump between Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3. Because I yeah. remember when I first saw it in cinema... Like, it's a excellent movie, but, like, it definitely yeah. feels so different to the first two. Um, yeah. It even feels different to Toy Story 1, in it, interestingly. Yeah. Oh, I think it's closer to that than it is to, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Really? Uh, just, I think, from, I think like, the whole, uh, you know, the stakes are higher. I, I felt like there was higher stakes in it, certainly, than there, uh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you no, can that's definitely true. get Woody back. Um, sort of thing. Yeah, that was a great conversation, lads. Yeah. That was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, next part is Al Spaceland and Toy Boy. Oh, is it over already? Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, wow. What a fantastic. What a, what a brilliant way I was re, I was re engaging <laughs> that whole thing. Fair play, guys. So, yeah. Um, there we go. Um, thanks to both Luke and Rodri. Um, check those, these guys out to do great work. Um, See you for the next part, guys, and have a great day, everyone. Bobbledink out.